Good morning. My name is David Long. I'm a 9-11 survivor and the author of the petition about 9-11 that has been presented to Canada's Parliament last week. I'll be your MC today. We will be bringing three statements. The first statement is from Bill Brinier, an American architect of 25 years. Bill is here to speak on behalf of the 9-11 families. Bill also lost his best friend in the World Trade Center on 9-11. Our second speaker is Isabel Beenan. She will be speaking on behalf of architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Our third speaker is Dr. Graham McQueen. Dr. McQueen has a PhD from Harvard University and taught at McMaster University for over 30 years. Dr. McQueen will be speaking on behalf of Consensus 9-11. And on that note, today in the U.S. Senate, a report has been released about the CIA's torture of people in regards to 9-11. Dr. McQueen will be pleased to answer any questions regarding this report and especially how that evidence was used to support the case for 9-11. So our first speaker today, Bill. Good morning. My name is Bill Bernier, and I'm a licensed architect practicing in New York State. On September 11th, 2001, I lost my best friend of 30 years. His name was Frank Martini, and he was the Port Authority construction manager at the World Trade Center where he had worked since 1993. In many ways, it was a dream job for Frank, and it had some unique perks. I remember in 1995, on the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II, he brought my brother Jack and me up onto the roof of the North Tower, and we watched the flyby show of World War II planes over the Hudson River. We had the roof to ourselves that afternoon. It was a beautiful day we had together. He got in a little bit of trouble, but it was worth it. Little did we know that six years later, he would be roaming the hallways of that same building, trying to rescue people from unspeakable horror. He could have left quickly with his group on the 88th floor, including his wife, whom he said goodbye to at that moment. But instead, he chose to go up several floors, evacuating people stuck on each floor. All told, he evacuated over 50 people that day before he lost his own life. I'm here today because so, so many people touched by this unthinkable tragedy, know the official story of what happened on that day simply does not add up, and I want the truth. I think Frank put it well when he famously said on TV, the building could probably sustain multiple jet impact, impacts of jetliners because the structure was like mosquito netting in your screen door. This intense grid, the jet plane, is just a pencil puncturing the, the screen netting. It really does nothing to the screen netting. For years now, we have researched, we have educated, and we have advocated. But so far, no responsible government entity has had the courage to look at the simple facts of what happened on 9-11. How does an endless stream of bright orange molten metal begin pouring out of the South Tower minutes before its collapse? Jet fuel fires cannot generate heat that will melt steel? Why do hundreds of firefighters and other eyewitnesses report explosions before and during each building's collapse? Why does the high-tech incendiary nanothermite appear on every sample of the World Trade Center dust? Now the Canadian Parliament has been given the responsibility to look at the simple facts because 1,400 Canadian citizens have signed a petition requesting it. And it is indeed a responsibility for what could be simpler than conducting a parliamentary review. That is all that this petition asks for. What excuse could there possibly be for not granting parliamentary review of the information that thousands of citizens deem to be important? Of course, the obvious excuse is we already know what happened. There's no reason to question the 9-11 Commission report. But how do you know if you don't review the information and evidence? 
To date, the government of Canada has not publicly reviewed the official account of 9-11, which is the basis for its involvement in the war on terror. That is all we ask for. On behalf of New York City Coalition for Accountability Now, an organization representing 9-11 fa uh, family members, fire first responders, and victims, and on whose board of directors I am proud to serve, and on behalf of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, whose petition I have signed as an architect, um, excuse me, I join with the countless Canadians in calling upon the government of Canada to grant this petition's request for parliamentary review of the omissions and inconsistencies in the 9-11 Commission report. It is time that our elected representatives somewhere in the world have the courage to look at the simple facts. And we now look to you, Canada. Thank you. My name is Isabel Beenan. I'm speaking today on behalf of the U.S. nonprofit organization Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, which comprises more than 2,300 building and technical professionals, including more than 100 Canadians, who are calling for a new, unimpeachable, independent investigation of the destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. AE 9-11 Truth is pleased to join with our colleagues from Rethink 9-11 Canada and the 9-11 Consensus Panel to endorse a petition presented on December 3rd in the House of Commons by Elizabeth May, leader of the Green Party. We applaud Elizabeth for her courage in submitting this historic petition, which has been signed by Canadians all across the country and which calls on the Canadian government to reinvestigate the events of September 11th. To this day, more than 13 years after the horrific events that have reshaped our society, millions of people around the world, including 9-11 family members, have serious questions about the official narrative of what happened on 9-11. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth is dedicated to exposing the falsehoods and to revealing the facts about the complete near free fall and symmetrical destruction of the three World Trade Center high-rises on September 11, 2001. These thousands of architects and engineers hope a, host a deep understanding of the scientific principles underpinning the forensic evidence, video and eyewitness testimony, which include the 47-story World Trade Center Building 7, the third skyscraper destroyed on the afternoon of 9-11, which exhibited all the characteristics of, of classic control demolition, and yet normal office fires were blamed for its seven-second destruction. The Twin Towers exhibited all of the characteristics of destruction by explosives, which were heard prior to their collapses and documented by hundreds of witnesses, which ejected four-ton steel framing sections at 100 kilometers per hour, landing almost 200 meters in every direction. All three high-rises exhibited none of the characteristics of destruction by fire which in more than a hundred previous blazing fires have never caused any skyscrapers to collapse until 9-11. Strong evidence of demolition using explosives and thermite incendiaries has been carefully documented even by government officials. Several tons of molten iron was found under the destroyed buildings and later in cool droplets throughout all the WTC dust samples. Unignited, high-tech nanothermite residue was discovered, documented, and peer-reviewed by independent scientists. Our U.S. petition was submitted, along with complete documentation of this evidence, in 2009 and again in 2013 to every senator and every congressman, the White House, and every mainstream media outlet. However, we have still not succeeded in bringing this critical issue to the forefront of the attention of our government and media. It is too close and too personal. There is apparently too much at stake. With a $4.5 trillion global war on terror on the heels of this catastrophic, catastrophic event based on wholesale fraud to the world. 
We therefore hereby beseech intercession from our friends to the north who have always risen to the task to aid the United States of America, which has failed to right this grievous wrong. A thorough investigation by the Canadian government can and must reset the course of history and bring about a future of peace based on a solid foundation of truth and justice. You are not alone. You have the full backing of not only the thousands of licensed, degreed architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, but millions of citizens around the world who are aware of the truth about 9-11. Thank you. Good day. My name is Graham McQueen, and I'm here to support the petition for a parliamentary review. The petition calls for a review in light of deficiencies in the 9-11 Commission report. Because we are all hearing today of the just, just released U.S. Senate report on torture, I'd like to remind you that torture testimony occupies a central position in the 9-11 Commission report. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, to take but one example, was suffocated by water dozens of times. His testimony would never have been accepted in any decent court, nor is it reliable. Yet, this testimony is essential to the 9-11 Commission report. And this is but one reason we need a new review. Suppose parliamentarians are still confused and say they don't have time to investigate the numerous claims and counterclaims about 9-11. The, the organization that I represent today, the 9-11 Consensus Panel, has been set up to help in such cases. We have an international panel of 24 experts. The panel's job is to systematically review evidence to see if there are criticisms of the official account that pass rigorous inspection. We currently have 44 such sound criticisms posted on our website, which I hope you will look at. An examination of these sound criticisms reveals that neither the 9-11 Commission, nor FEMA, nor the National Institute of Standards and Technology has followed standard acceptable research methods. An example would be ignoring one over 150 eyewitnesses who perceived explosions and in some cases were thrown dozens of feet by these explosions on 9-11. At this moment in history, when Canada risks new major military involvement within the framework of the war on terror, I urge all of those who wish to know the facts about 9-11 to support a parliamentary review. Thank you. Yeah. What do you guys think is behind it? Is the CIA? say, you know, there were uh, explosives attached to the, uh, the foundation of these Twin Towers, but who's behind it? Well, I don't think we're pointing the finger at anybody. We're just... Yeah, oh, okay. I said, I don't think we're pointing the finger at anybody. We're just calling for a new investigation, an independent one. We're not saying who is behind it. We're just saying that the official narrative is wrong. That's... <laughs> not that... I'm not an expert. I can't share any theories but I would I would just like to uh, reinforce what Isabel said as individuals speaking on a one-to-one -one basis we might have our own theories none of the three organizations that is represented today is trying to get you to buy their theory about who did it we're calling for objective independent review the reason why you came to Canada is because you're not getting anywhere with the senators or the White House mm -hmm. down in the States. Correct. Do you have any other countries? Any other Commonwealth countries? Australia? Maybe the UK? Have you talked to them as well? We've posted information uh, previously about how to do uh, a, a petition process. Uh, there are petition processes in uh, the United Kingdom um, and uh, in Australia and um, they have similar processes in European countries. I don't know of any petitions like ours that are going forward at this time. 
hundred names on this petition? One thousand four hundred and twenty-seven. Uh, and you folks talked to Elizabeth May before she introduced this petition, or was this kind of just you sent it to her and she just introduced it with her conversation with her office? We've had no conversations with Elizabeth May. Her position on this is that every member of parliament should submit petitions regardless of their content, and that's all that we can say about that. You folks also don't believe in climate change, is that correct? That's what I was told. Maybe that's incorrect. We're here to talk about 9-11 and the evidence, and we have no comments on any other issues. Right. So uh, every peer-reviewed study, I think except for one, has uh, reinforced the official story of 9-11, uh, the events of 9-11, the 9-11 Commission Report. Uh, the one uh, peer-reviewed study that does back your theory uh, has been questioned for its process. Uh, why do you think the Canadian government should listen to you, given that there's no actual peer-reviewed science behind anything you're saying? I don't believe that to be the case. There is peer-reviewed science uh, backing what we're saying. Bill, do you want to comment further on that? Well, to my knowledge, there is no peer-reviewed uh review of of the NIST report. The NIST report is is non-science. To believe that simple office fires could cause a seven second collapse of a 47 story building is unheard of. It's impossible. Now there are peer reviewed studies of alternate explanations as to what happened and they're not being accepted by the, the mainstream media and uh, Therefore, they're not out in front of the, the public at large. And that's why we're here today. And we're going to continue as long as it takes. As long as I have breath in my, in my lungs, I will continue to support a proper investigation. It's not our job to figure out who did it. That's the job of the authorities. And what we're asking the authorities to do is to do their job. Can I make a brief comment? Mm -hmm. um, if you go to the website of the Journal of 9-11 Studies, you will find an article, it's not I think the last article, but it's within the last four, that reviews peer-reviewed articles on the collapse of the buildings over about the last, uh, well, since 9-11. And you'll find there a pretty thorough catalog of how many of those articles support the official story and how many question it. So we don't have to guess about that, that work has been done for us. So how many school students do you think it would have taken to level one of those twin towers? I would say significant explosives. The one thing that we do know is that there was, pardon? I have no numbers, no numbers. Um, but to take down buildings that were constructed of steel and concrete in a matter of seconds took an enormous amount of energy, absolutely enormous amount of energy. There was, in fact, a, a major elevator uh, renovation uh, to all three buildings at the time, at, for the preceding nine months. So there was ample opportunity for somebody to get in there. Uh, there have been reports of trucks arriving at the World Trade Center between 3 and 4 a.m. every morning for the previous two months before 9-11. Uh, that was ample opportunity to get things in there. The security was, um, was completely controlled by uh, members of the government. So there is suspicion that there, there is some kind of inside operation, but that's just it, it's suspicion. No one can actually know what happened until there is a real and thorough investigation, impartial, look at all the evidence. So much of the evidence was, was ignored in the 9-11, if, if you read the 9-11 report, there's nine, over 900 pages, and they don't even mention Building 7. It's not even mentioned. It just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. So where do you get nanothermite? What is nanothermite? If there's thermite, what's nanothermite? Well, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to try to go into the details, but it's assumed that it's a milita military uh, product. Um, it's not that difficult to make. Kevin Ryan, who is a chemist and who is co-editor of the Journal of 9-11 Studies, has made it and posted the method on the website. Uh, because it's 
tiny particles. It is uh, more dangerous both as an incendiary and an explosive than ordinary thermite. Uh, each particle has more surface area exposed to oxygen, to the air. And we know it exists, we know there's research, research been done on it, and we know that it's been found in the dust of the World Trade Center. As far as I am concerned, I have seen no credible, innocent explanation for its presence in the dust. Whether it was used as an incendiary or an explosive or both, I don't know. But it was certainly used for some non-innocent purpose. You're the uh, co-editor of Journal 9-11 uh, Studies. Yeah. In your studies and in your investigation, um, what were some of the reasonings of why people thought, you know, that let's say if the government decided to blow up these buildings, was it to go after potential terrorist groups? To Kind of like what happened with, some argue, the Second World War with, uh, you know, the U.S. waited to get involved until, you know, the bombing of, of uh, Pearl Harbor. I mean, you know, just whatever. I mean... <coughs> Did you uncover anything from interviewing a lot of people? Um, Journal of 9-11 Studies is like the other organizations here. We don't have a position on who did it or why. Um, as for me, I was at one time the director of the Center for Peace Studies at McMaster University, and I'm very interested in wars and why they break out, and I'm interested in war triggers. So speaking for myself, I believe believe the 9-11 and following anthrax attacks, which I've just had a book published on, were war triggers. They were meant to trigger particular wars for particular purposes, and they were successful for that end. That's my personal opinion, not as a representative of any group. Thank you, everyone.